Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Caddy Cube Tuesdays. Every week on, as the name suggests, Tuesday. Uh, today's wonderful, perfect guest. You might be able to guess who it is from this delightful illustration that we did. It's Ian Anderson Gray. That's slightly scary as a picture coming up at you like that. But that one isn't. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Ian, you should have just smiled. Welcome. Thank you for thank you for this. It's great to hang out with you, Jason. We we did that a few weeks ago, didn't you? When you well, it was months ago when you were on my show. Yeah, it was brilliant. You wrote a song, so I thought I'd do an, an animation of your face. So <laughs> not tit for tat, but tat for tit or whatever it would be. A quick <laughs> song for you. A quick hello, and we're good to go. Welcome to the show, Ian Anderson Gray. Oh, I like that. Slightly too long, your name. It doesn't quite scan with the melody no, I wrote. I'm sorry. Well, there's a story about that. I mean, I I, I didn't use my middle name uh, at school. It was just it was kind of pa partly for 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 SEO and branding and all that kind of stuff. But it came because I was trained as a professional singer, and you needed to have a unique name. So that background as a singer kind of helped me with the um, the SEO, Brilliant. but not with not with being in a song. I don't know. That's the disadvantage. <laughs> Made it slightly more difficult. But yeah. if anyone wants to hear Ian's song about me and the brand surf guy, uh, it's out there on Twitter. We, we made a little video of it. So uh, you can go and see that. And just a quick word about upping our game. We've been having animations. We've got sponsors. We've got silly things going on. And I wanted to sh give a quick shout out to Ian and also to Erin Sparks and um, to, I'm trying to think who else is on that list. I can't actually read it. Uh, these great podcasts who, who are actually pushing the video production uh, standards of, of the video of the podcast that we're getting out online in the industry right now. And also the fact that we've now got sponsors and these four sponsors, either Wordlift sponsoring us for the last year and a half, uh, Digital Olympus, SE Ranking and Ahrefs, who are coming up as sponsors. And this is starting to feel like a real show and I'm feeling terribly professional until I forget everybody's name. Thanks so much. On to Ian's brand SERP. You were talking about um you're you're using your middle name so if we look at the brand cert next we've got here we go uh, it disambiguates beautifully for your brand cert um me, make sure that you're number one top center with two little site links there or big site links and a knowledge panel with a description taken from twitter which is something i don't see very often uh, did you try to get that or did you mean to get that no i think this is i, I wonder if this is quite new because i don't remember seeing Twitter as the main thing. Uh, it, I mean, you, Twitter used to be my main social network, and then I kind of fell out of love with it. And then in the last month or so, I've kind of embraced it a bit more. So maybe that's partly because why it's there. Right. Know. Who knows? That, that's really groovy. Yeah, no, 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 fine. And uh, just for information, you could claim the knowledge panel because it's actually recognized your entity home. So you're doing an amazing job on your knowledge panel. Congratulations to you. You're my new favorite person because anyone who works well on their knowledge panel is my favorite person. Oh, cool. So, right, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm charming you because you want to be perfect. Can you tell me about that? Why are you such a perfectionist? Oh, well, I, I know I'm not the only one. It seems every, almost everyone I meet uh, seems, to be, seems to be struggling with this. I, I don't know. I think um, <clears throat> I've never really thought that much about why I'm a perfectionist. I just... I think it can. I think it's partly a genetic thing, uh, because I see it in my my daughter uh, and my son. Um, I think it's partly because I I do want to do the best. I want to I want to um, make a good impression, and I think that brings me on to one of the reasons. Whereas I think when I was younger, I used to feel that if I did that, then people would like me, and uh, so. But I, I think it's partly because these days, I think I wrongly equate per, it, perfectionism or if something is perfect as, well, people will buy that or people will right. read it. Um, and I, I also knew that that is not correct because when I launched uh, a course of my first course, but for quite a few years ago, hmm. I launched it at the time when I was moving house and everything else was going on. And it was absolutely not perfect. I slapped 12 hmm. videos together on a page. Uh, I password protected it in WordPress and I thought, oh, this is awful. Like this is not professional at all. This is, 
but it was my most successful course ever. <laughs> oh right, okay. So so like although because because the actual content itself was was good, um, but the the actual way I'd put it together was not it was not what I wanted to do. But I I had no choice because I knew people wanted it. Um, so Ooh. yeah. No, no, that, that's good advice because people are asking for the knowledge panels course and I'm kind of thinking, I'm umming and ahhing and thinking, do I know enough about it? Have I really mastered every aspect and can I put it all down? Can I script it? And maybe I should just kind of go out and well, do it. I, I find that hilarious. I mean, I find it hilarious for an, on a number of reasons because, like, first of all, you are like Mr. Brand Serps. I mean, like, yep. you are the guy. You are the guy that I'd go to, like most people would go to. Um, but... I also like. I'm laughing because like I see that in myself. It's this. It's I don't know. It's partly imposter syndrome as well because I think because we want we want to to know everything about a subject and we also potentially look yeah. at other people out there and think, well, they might they probably know more than I do, uh, and we we have a kind of very bad uh, perception of ourselves. I don't think often we're we're very good at uh, looking at ourselves and, and yeah. coming up with. A true representation of ourselves so um if you talk to other people like i've just said about you you are the guy you're the brand steps guy so you know you should yeah. jolly well create a course get on with <laughs> Thank it you. Oh, oh, oh you're bullying me now how <laughs> lovely but in fact i mean the, the 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 point really for me is that i know i know a lot and i know i know more than most people probably anyone let's say what well, that might be pushing it but i also see all the stuff i don't know and i kind of think i need to know more because I need to know it all, and I can't know it all. I probably know like 10% yeah. of everything there is to know, and it's a stupid idea. So I'm going to go for what you just said and go for it and make a well, terrible course, and everyone will buy it. <laughs> well, it won't be terrible. I mean, the thing is, like, we, we, it, it will be so much better. Um, people, will, people will definitely get value from, from it. And, you know, it's not about knowing everything. I, I don't buy courses, or I don't, like, hire a coach uh, because they know everything about a subject, I, right. that, I mean, I what obviously they need to know something about it, and uh, but they also need to. I need to kind of get on with them, from a mm. like personal level. So, like, do I actually like? That's a good point. You and and I, I find this as a, as a live video consultant and a live show. I'm I'm certainly not the only person that is talking about this. There are I know mm. like some of the, the the biggest people in the industry. And I can, I've sometimes struggled with imposter syndrome and thinking, well, like these guys know much more than me. And in some cases, that's absolutely the case. Like mm. I can't know everything about live video. So like I, I, I could then go through periods of thinking, well, like why am I bothering? And the reason I'm bothering is because I have a particular way of approaching it and I have a particular background. You know, I trained as a professional classical singer. So that doesn't mean that I, that doesn't itself mean that I'm the best live video consultant in the world it just means that I have a different approach to it and I'm looking at it from a different point of view and so our personalities our backgrounds are also really important as yeah. well so it's not just about what you know no, no I'm just, sorry just to explain uh to people who are listening Ian stalled very slightly there because when he said classical singer I smiled and I think he th he might have thought I was laughing at the classical singer and I was actually smiling because I was a punk folk singer yeah so it couldn't be more distant in terms of style of singing but we both sung anyway can you now tell me Ian how do you take that perfectionist kind of attitude to make better shows and to be able to then turn them into what you're calling a content machine <laughs> yeah well <laughs> Uh, I so so just another just a little bit of background. I, I, when it came to like creating content, mm. I I I was a I I created some blog posts which really uh, were amazing for 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 my for my brand awareness, I suppose, and for helping me in my business. So I wrote an article called Seven Reasons Not to Use Hootsuite, which Ooh. was looking at the which kind of looked at both sides of whether it's a good or a bad tool. Uh, and that went completely viral. And then I wrote another article on how to broadcast to Facebook Live. And that's had over like six and a half million page views. Ooh. My perfectionism really helped there. And, and also I, I, I got diagnosed with ADHD last year, um, oh. which I think was really interesting because I think it showed that those moments when I wrote those articles was in my hyper focus stage. And I was trying to make it perfect. And so it served me well in a sense. But the problem with that is that it took me months of procrastination 
and beating myself up and trying Ooh. to make them perfect. And it was so when live video came about, I found uh, that it was it's the perfect antidote to recovering perfectionists such as me and many other people because live video is never going to be perfect. I mean, we've you know, I've I've made mistakes. I've stumbled over my words. Uh, this is not what you're seeing now is not perfection. Absolutely not. But what no. you're getting is hopefully valuable content. But you're also seeing the real us. You're seeing the flawed characters that we are. And people love that. Um, but it also means that, yes, of course, you prepare beforehand. You know vaguely what you're going to be talking about. But then you go live. You're creating that content. You're not having to re-edit it loads of times. You're turning up. You're doing it. And at the end of it, you can then repurpose that into lots of other right. pieces of content. So just, I'm turning oh, sorry. up. Mm. Oh, sorry. Just before we go on to the repurposing yeah, bit, is, is I was just I was thinking now, I mean, I actually love the live aspect because it's like throwing yourself off a building and going, let's see what happens. Not quite, obviously, that extreme. but um, And I enjoy the experience. And I think like you, I would tend to do a video recording and I would look at it and say, that's not perfect and try doing it again. Yeah. And it's a massive waste of time because the incremental improvements I'm making are actually not noticeable to most people. And the personality and the real us, as you just said, is actually probably more pleasant. Yes. Yeah, and, and so like I re I remember trying to record an intro to a course I was doing a video, and I was I was in front of a green screen, and it was even worse because there was somebody else there, and I was yeah. like feeling all like oh my goodness I'm gonna have to get this perfect, and I think I like, did it twenty takes before I got it, and it wasn't perfect, so like I was pr so that was I was practicing being perfect, and mm -hmm. I failed, whereas with live video you're actually doing the opposite you're practicing being imperfect, you're practicing not being perfect, uh, and embracing that um, right. in a way. Uh, now, I need to I need to clarify what I'm saying here, because what I mean by that is, you're, you're practicing being comfortable, being imperfect, and embracing your flaws. Um, but that does not mean to say that you shouldn't continue to strive to make improvements. And this is one of the things you were saying at the beginning of the show, you know, you're you're adding new bits, you're making things more professional or whatever. And so there's those incremental bits that you can add over time. But if you'd started trying to be perfect, you would never have started. Right. Yeah, no, no, 100%. I mean, I did throw myself into this, but the Anton's great support. And Anton has been incredible about saying, just let's just go and do it. Mm -hmm. And I do like the regularity of every Tuesday. It forces me to do it, even if I don't feel like it. Uh, I think that's very powerful for me personally, because I bully myself into doing it, and I generally enjoy it. In fact, I think probably one episode that I didn't particularly enjoy in the entire 100, almost 100 episodes now, but talking of professionalism and getting it wrong live, I forgot the animation for the sponsors. So can we do that now? And I'm admitting I so. that I got Why it not? totally Let's wrong. Let's do it. This week's episode produced in partnership with the wonderful WordLift, an AI-powered SEO tool that does the heavy lifting for you. And we don't have a second sponsor this week, so I wanted to give a featured CaliQ Pro agency shout out to Site Strategics. Uh, Erin Sparks, delightful chat. They're using the CaliQ Pro platform and making an absolute... I'm trying to think of an adjective. Absolute great, wonderful job of it. There you go. Brilliant. That's good. I like that. <laughs> so that's the live thing is I can't think of an adjective that makes sense off the top of my head as I kind of spout rubbish um, as we go through that presentation. So we have the recovering perfectionist who's making a live show, embracing the fact that it's live, embracing the fact that it's not perfect. Then you're going to repurpose it. And and that's I think that's the key because, like, there's an, an enormous amount of effort I think that goes into into live to begin with uh, because it is it can be quite nerve wracking you know it's the first time I went live I remember getting very stressed about it and that now it's a lot easier I mean now I mm. I really do enjoy it and but still there's still a lot of energy that goes into it but you've got all this planning beforehand it, mm. you know. You, you, so you can vaguely know what you're talking about. It's good to plan, I think. Uh, so you've you've done all of that. You've pressed the end broadcast button, and then what a lot of people do is they I don't know they either like have a lie down or d do something. They f <laughs> but they forget that they've only done the live element, and and that's great. The community aspect of it is great. You can hang out with your audience. They can ask you questions. Uh, I mean that's a whole other topic that we we 
could talk about the importance of involving your audience. But you've got this amazing piece of content that you can then repurpose to help uh, to to spread the word because yeah. I, I'm going to say something really controversial here, but mm. like not everyone likes live video. Not everyone is in the position to watch live video live. You might yeah. be washing the dishes, you might be driving. So um, you've got the the live element, you people can watch the replay, but people who maybe don't know you, they might be more likely to watch a two minute snippet. And you do an amazing job of this, Jason. I've noticed like on YouTube oh. and, and Twitter, you, you're sharing all this. Yeah, you know, it's actually snippet. the CaliCube team. So a big shout out to them. Oh, we cool. actually have a whole process and they're, they're amazing. We have a whole kind of, do Mary Ann picks the, the knowledge nuggets. So she'll be picking some from today. Ed does the transcripts with the fancy captions. Then Joanne pushes it out on social media and Sheila does the thumbnails and it's this incredible process. Yeah. It's, in, it's really, really interesting. And I'm really enjoying it because Mary Ann's choices are nothing like the choices I would have made. Oh, that's uh, interesting. Yeah. It's, it's cool. I mean, so at the moment I'm, I'm doing, I'm choose, I'm doing the choosing. And I think actually I've always thought it'd be good for somebody else to, to do the choosing mm. as well, or, or even just like completely like leave me out of it and you choose because uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I think I would choose very different things to somebody else. So yeah, you so you've got the the video snippets or as my, a friend mm. of mine, Amy Woods, uh, who's um, her business is content TEDx is all about content right. repurposing. She calls this video babies. So Ooh. like your your live show has had lots of babies. And, and <laughs> in a sense, that's kind of what what that is. So think about making square videos for Instagram and, and uh, portrait videos for, for story formats and things like that. So that that's one way of doing it. You've also got the replay. Uh, you could turn it into a podcast. Yep. And this is something that I do. So uh, most live video tools, uh, for example, like StreamYard does this, Ecamm Live does this, Restream does this, that will allow you to save the the recording, not just in video format, but in audio format. Yep. And sometimes it will, some of the tools will actually will separate your audio from your guest's audio. So if I was to have a coughing fit halfway through this, I would not ruin your podcast episode because you could just cut that little bit out. Right. Or if our levels were, were, were not great, if I was too quiet or too loud, you could yeah. adjust that afterwards. So like turning it into a podcast is great because you've then got people who maybe are driving, they're doing the, the dishes, and they're not able to watch a video, then they want to listen. And, mm. and as I said, some people prefer to listen. So you've actually got when you do a live show, you've got to think about three different audiences, you've got the pe the first mm. people that will join are from the from the future, they're your replay audience watching. <laughs> and they will be watching on their own. Oh, can I say hello to the people from the future? Hello, people from the future. <laughs> so you, are from, you are from the future. You might not know this, but uh, <laughs> but then the live viewers, if you're watching live, you'll be aware of other people watching you live. Even if there aren't any comments, you'll see there's that number of, of uh, that will show you how many other people are watching. And it also, currently says five thousand six hundred and twenty two. Well, so there you go. I mean, no, it so doesn't you, actually. But, so there you you feel, go. <laughs> but you feel that you're part of a community. So there's yeah. a party atmosphere. And then you've got a third audience if you're repurposing. And that's your podcast listeners. They're again from the future. But the, the thing to bear in mind there is, as well as it being very intimate, they're plugging you into Ooh. their ears, right. which is uh, like a really amazing thing. But also they are, f they are not able to see. So you've obviously got to explain what's happening on the screen, mm. which is fine for, for a show like this. But if you've got a very visual show, I, was, I, was, I had a guest on my show earlier today. We were looking at the, the live video tour, Ecamm Live, right. and it was quite visual. So I was having to just remember if you're listening to the podcast da, 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 you know you just got to think about that as well yeah we had nick ranger who came on the show eight nine months ago and she brought a whole slide deck so we spent the whole show explaining yeah. kind of what they were seeing um and it was actually quite a lot of fun i mean it was quite complicated but it's a delightful delightful show yeah. incredibly informative and it was actually quite enjoyable describing the screens but yeah um 100 yeah. percent. so that's so that's podcast and then of course the final thing just to say is blog posts. So uh, right. I mean, you know, we, we, we could talk about SEO when it comes to podcasting, but uh, blog, I, I convert all of mine into um, a blog post. Uh, so I, 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 so I embed the video on there, I embed right. the podcast, 
and also uh, a blog post. Although I've not been doing that so much recently, but all of my previous ones have blog posts as well. And so there's that, loads of ways you well, can do that. Yeah, for the blog post, what do you do? Some people just do a transcript and dump that into a page. Some people correct the transcript and just make it vaguely readable and it ends up being 5,000 words or whatever it is. And some people rewrite the whole thing. And some people reorganize it and rewrite it and restructure it, especially in this kind of case where that where it's a conversation. It doesn't really read very well. Yeah, what, so, so I used to, I, I did, the first few I did, I did just bung up the the, the, the transcription, sorry. Uh and it, I, I, I'm a great believer in if, if you wouldn't read it, then don't expect yeah. other people to. I, okay. And it might, I don't know what, from an SEO point of view, it might, might be kind of better than nothing. But um, I think having a transcription on there is, is useful, particularly for those who, um, I was going to say visually impaired, impaired but that's the wrong one, um, who, 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 um, I've got hearing problems or whatever, then that's right. maybe maybe useful. But so the, so the way I I did it, I at one point I hired somebody to to do it, right? And um, so so they would listen to the podcast and then they would put it make it into a, uh, a blog post. Uh, mm -hmm. And it doesn't it, we don't have to be really long here. But what I think is really important here is this: it's the planning beforehand. So I will right. hopefully come kind of come up with like three or four headings. Um, and then that makes it easier for, for afterwards then to, tr to make it into a blog post. I, I now what I do is I will put it into a tool called Descript. So I'll, I will download the audio or the video, put it into this tool called Descript. It will tra transcribe it for me. It's not perfect, but then Ooh. I can go through, I can say, ah, oh, that's where, that's where that heading should go. That's where that heading should go. Right. And, and then I will try and, uh, and, and then, let make it less transcript transcriptory, whatever the word is, and make it transcript esque. Like, that's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, that's that's how I would do. It. But, yeah. But what's really important, I think, is that, uh, for example, with links, you, you know, uh, making it more into a show notes, so it doesn't have mm. to be like really mega. But what people are probably wanting to do once once they've listened to the podcast or they're listening to the podcast, they want to say, oh, like Jason mentioned this really cool tool, but I can't remember what it was. So if they go right. to the go to the the blog post or the show notes, they can see it in there. That's really important. And I think the and, final thing, just to say briefly, is yep. have a have short links. So I I I've got like iag.me forward slash one o five for episode one hundred and five, and that will redirect you to the blog post. So I right. will say that on the show and on the podcast as well. Oh, that that's smarter than ours. Ours is calicube dot com slash calicube Tuesdays number. 95 for example well, you can you can ha you can have that but but i've got a just a short link as well that will redirect you to no so that that's my idea of a short link so it's a kind of semi-short link that doesn't really work but i kind of figured having calicube.com on on screen when we share the link uh and generally speaking seeing the name of the company is better than seeing whatever it is you've got your own but bitly or something like that i, I prefer having my company name well I think, yeah was, well my that is my website i i a g yeah. me is so it's short anyway so i suppose that no I sure i mean it, it does now make me think maybe i'll buy a, a very short domain that represents yeah. cali cube and and use that i'll give that it would be cali.be and i better buy it right after the show before somebody else buys it and <laughs> tries to sell it to for a fortune um but that also just remind me of ben shapiro from voices of search what he does is take out lots of quotes and he puts them underneath the show. And I found that really interesting because it means I can just read the quotes and I get a really good idea of what the person's saying. I get an idea if it's going to resonate with me. And then I watch the show or listen to the show rather. Yeah, I like that idea too. That's great. And again, that's something, sorry, I mean, Descript are not sponsoring me or I don't have any kind of like <laughs> relation with them. But, but I, I find it a really kind of helpful tool because I bung it, bung it in there hmm. and then I can see, oh, like Jason's like, said this amazing thing this amazing quote so i could just like highlight that and then uh open it up as a new composition and then i can turn that into a what do you call it like an audiogram or, or some kind of quote right. and, and put it in there yeah so, or a baby a video baby a video we actually baby. make our, our video babies using descript and we use oh, cool. it for the transcript so i'm not sponsored by descript either and to even things up fireflies.ai is pretty good as well uh, but it just does sound uh, it's oh, got a very cool. good transcription machine in it. Whatever that a transcription machine. Don't know if that's a thing, but anyway, it's we, we, pretty good. We all we all love our tools. And Descript, if you're watching, you need to sponsor both of us. I think. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Brilliant. Oh, you're, you're very good at this kind of sponsoring <laughs> pitching thing. Um, and so coming back to that, I mean, I really like the, the video babies. I'm having a lot of fun with them. Um, uh, uh, Ofa Familiar has got a, a, an actual company and they're trying to build AI that squeezes videos. So he would be saying, we're squeezing babies out of the video, which sounds slightly creepy and worrying. But... <laughs> yeah, that does you know, get, get social services involved. <laughs> but I, I really like that idea because we're calling them CaliCube Knowledge Nuggets, and it is these very short kind of little snippets. And if they're less than a minute, which we're now making shorts out of them, the vertical version for YouTube. Mm. We're going to see if that works. Oh, and by the way, in a, in a, the, in a couple of weeks, it's the 100th episode, and we're going to have a competition and so everyone get ready. We're going to announce it tomorrow. Uh, you pick your favorite knowledge nugget, any, any piece of information that any guest has sh shared over the 100 episodes, and Ahrefs are going to be giving away swag, not only to the person who picks the best moment, but the person who said the best moment. So if your moment is picked, Ian, you get swag from Ahrefs as well as the person who picks the moment. There's a challenge. You have five <laughs> minutes to say something incredibly brilliant. Not that you haven't said anything brilliant. No, 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 no. <laughs> Shame on me. It just came out before yeah, I saw it. Right. I'll forgive you. I'll forgive you. <laughs> anyway, yeah, right. You've got four minutes left. Should we wrap this up with kind of your whole process from saying, okay, I'm a perfectionist. I'm using live video to put myself in front of the audience, force myself to just go for it, and then repurpose. Describe the process from beginning to end so that we can understand it and we can put it in a knowledge nugget. So I th the the first thing is some you, you 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 need to do some deep work. You need to do some work on yourself, and uh, that might involve getting some help with confidence in front of the camera. But you mm -hmm. but you but it really comes down to my the, the five P's. I've got the five P's. So the first mm. P is planning. You need to know why are you doing this. If you know why you're doing a live show, if you know why what's what you're going to get out of it, then you're more likely to turn up and do it. Uh, and pl so it's planning what the show is about, uh, what are the, the what the value the audience are going to get out of it. So that's the first P, planning. The next one is uh, pre-promotion. So let people know that you're going to be going live next Tuesday mm -hmm. at two o'clock. Don't just like go live and expect like thousands of people to be watching you live. You've got to let people know if you're scheduling, if you're using a, a tool like StreamYard or Ecamm or whatever, they all allow you to schedule to Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn, and you will be given that link ahead of time. So then send right. it out on Twitter, on Facebook, on your newsletter. Don't forget email. Let people know. Then it's the day. It's, it's Tuesday, and it's right. time to go live. So that is the production. So spend some time getting used to the tool, uh, and but it doesn't need to be perfect. Just the first live that you do, just go live. Make sure, make sure you've got the plan in, 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 ahead of time. And then once you've done that and you press that end broadcast button, it's then onto the next P. And this is you want to turn your live show into a piece of evergreen content. So uh, that is post-promotion. Right. So again, you can go to social and, and email and let people know it's there. Put it on uh, your blog, uh, on your website as well. But then we're on to the final P. And I'm slightly cheating here because it's got its re Purposing, repurp I think mm. it's kind of a P. That is a bit of a cheat, but yeah. Oh, come right. on, come on. <laughs> and <if> you... <laughs> so, purposing, anyway. uh, couldn't you say purposing again? I could do. Pur pur Brilliant. Pur anyway, uh, so final P, and then that, that's repurposing. So it's turning it into those video babies, into blog posts, into podcasts, into all that kind of thing. And putting all of that together in a, in a process, start simple. I've got a I've got a very simple process, and uh, the, but the uh, why I used to have a very bit, uh, simple process. Now my process is really quite comprehensive and big, but I started simply, so that's what I would suggest that people. Right, do. yeah. So you've got your five P's, and then the overarching P is process. Absolutely brilliant, Ian. That was delightful. You get the outro song. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. It was absolutely wonderful. I found that interesting, inspiring, and funny and enjoyable. A quick. Goodbye to and the show. Thank you, Ian. <laughs> it's been great to be here. Thank you. Wonderful. Outro animation from Anton. CaliCube. It's all about your brand, Serp.